As always, it's really good to have you with us at our daily service. For the next couple of weeks, as we move towards Good Friday, we're thinking about the death of the Lord Jesus and his amazing sacrifice made for you and for me. We'll begin with some words of the Apostle Paul from 1 Corinthians. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Loving Father, we confess that with our own natural way of thinking, we would never come to know you and we'd never see in the cross of Jesus your perfect plan of salvation. We praise you for opening our eyes and we pray please continue to reveal to us the wonder of what Jesus did for us that we might love him more and trust him and serve him for your name's sake. Amen. We're looking this week at the fourth of the so-called servant songs of the prophet Isaiah and it speaks so wonderfully and so clearly of the Lord Jesus Christ and especially of his death on the cross that it's been described as the fifth gospel. I'm going to read from the beginning of Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Isaiah was writing at a time when the people of God were oppressed by the nations around them and the prophet tells them it's going to get worse. The Babylonians will crush them and that will be not just a defeat by foreign power, it would be the judgment of God on their sin. And it's that prophecy of judgment that dominates the opening chapters of Isaiah. And then in the second section, Isaiah makes it clear that God who has judged his people will wonderfully come to save them. In the language of the first verse, the arm of the Lord will be at work. And God's arm, the arm of the Lord, speaks of his mighty saving power. But, listen to verse 1. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And the answer is, very few. Once the arm of the Lord did come to act in salvation, could see what it truly was because God's arm didn't come in the way they expected. Far, far from it. We have here what is a prophecy of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. Not much to look at, but there is hope here. From an apparently dead plant in the midst of a wilderness, a desert, a green shoot appears. It's a sign of hope. Speaking about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, but as he grew up, in the eyes of the world, he looked very unimpressive indeed. The end of verse 2. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He grew up in Nazareth, a very ordinary place, in a backwater in the country, in an ordinary family. And he was nothing to look at. He didn't have a halo around his head. If you saw him in the crowd, you wouldn't even notice him. And then he began his public ministry. And he spoke words of astonishing love and truth, performed amazing miracles, showed compassion and mercy to everyone. And yet, verse 3, he was despised and rejected by mankind. 
a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. How should we respond to these words which remind us of the humiliation and suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, for a start, we should respond surely with shame. God came into the world in the person of his Son. Perfect goodness, perfect divinity. And what did we human beings do? We rejected him and killed him. And the Bible makes it clear that what was done in that first century, as Jesus hung on the cross, actually reflects what all human beings are like by nature. We don't want God ruling over our lives. And we push him out, we reject him. We should respond with great shame. But also, of course, with adoration and worship. Because the divine Son of God, who enjoyed eternal glory with his Father, surrounded by worshipping angels, willingly came into this world of suffering and grief. And he experienced himself profound suffering and rejection. And he did it for you and for me. Yes, surely we respond with adoration and worship and with encouragement. Have you ever felt unattractive? Sense that people look away from you in disgust? Have you known what it's like to be rejected, perhaps ignored? It's as if you don't even exist. Or despised, an object of derision and scorn, maybe because of your loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the wonderful reality is, we know from these verses, that Jesus gets it. We're suffering in any way. We have a God who's experienced profound suffering and rejection. He understands. Man of sorrows, what a name to describe the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Praise God for the suffering servant. Let's express our faith in God now in the words of this creed. Together. We believe in God the Father, who has revealed his love and kindness to us, and in his mercy saved us, not for any good deed of our own, but because he is merciful. We trust in Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us to free us from our sin, and set us apart for himself, a people eager to do good. We trust in the Holy Spirit, whom God poured out on us generously through Christ our Saviour, so that justified by grace, we might become heirs with the hope of eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the example of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, has taught us the greatness of true humility, give us grace to serve one another in all lowliness, and to enter into the fellowship of his sufferings, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, at this time of great uncertainty in our country and around the world, we pray that people would turn to you for stability and comfort. We pray particularly for those who don't yet know Jesus that through some means in the midst of all that is happening, they would hear the good news of him. Grant them repentance and the knowledge of the truth, that they may know you and the secure joy of eternal life in him. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And then together, let's say these words, one of the set prayers for this week. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Saviour, gave his back to the smiters and did not hide his face from shame, give us grace to endure the sufferings of this present time with sure confidence in the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Our song reminds us of all that the Lord Jesus endured, and he did it for you and for me. Praise God for the suffering servant, the Lord Jesus Christ. He died to give us peace. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>